Welcome back to Eco. Today we're going to be moving on from making iron, although you can see I've been making quite a bit of it off camera. Uh, we're going to be moving on into pottery and probably maybe even into glass working, but uh, we'll get there in a minute. Uh, I just want to make sure that I have all this stuff. Yep, lots of iron bars. Uh, downstairs, I pretty much updated everything by putting in a dedicated stockpile for the tailings right next to where that bloomery is, and uh, that's all good. So from the supply I've got in my backpack, I can make a whole bunch of nails. You'll see I've been making windmills. You can make those on your carpentry table. Uh, I'm just going to bring the cart inside for a minute. And yep, so windmills and water wheels. You're going to need three of each at least because to get pottery requires something else. If you have a look in pottery down here somewhere, pottery, there we go. Uh, out of all this stuff, most of it's just rocks. You can just use geology basics and uh, mortared stone. However, this one, the Engineering Research Paper Advanced, they need something else. They, If you have a look in here, they need three windmills and, uh, one, well, one windmill and one water wheel per paper, and you need three of them, so you need to make some of those. So I had to make windmill windmills anyway, so I put a few on the side of the, the building, as you saw. Uh, th these are more than enough to power that sawmill, for instance, but later on we'll need more mechanical power than these. Uh, but uh, perfectly fine as they are. They do have a good range away from them, so I could move them upstairs a little bit further. I just didn't. I got lazy, <laughs> basically. Uh, but today, yes, we need to go pot pottery. So I made the book. I've gone and learned the book from the skill scroll. Uh, so there we go. But now I can take it in here. So pottery. And there we go. Take the star. Yes. Okay, so you may not be now asking, why did you take pottery? It sounds like a boring and useless thing. Well, boring maybe, but useless, no. Uh, the main thing is in Pottery 2, we have the Advanced Upgrade 1, and that is the first uh, upgrade, obviously. And then it goes into Advanced Upgrade 2 via glass working. And obviously, this is the same kind of things that we already have for um, basic modules. We have basic upgrade 3s, etc. And we can then do the same thing, but for machines like this that use the advanced upgrade. Importantly, the Bloomery also uses advanced upgrade, if I remember rightly. So having that save um, resources basically gets me more iron rather than uh, using it without modules to get these, this amount of iron. So off we go. However, to do that, we have a fairly good way of doing it. Let's just basically hook up the storage that I want. Uh, I have a storage that's just full of mortar. Yeah, there we go. So just full of mortar. And you can see I've only got 10... 10 clay here so let's just uh let's just make uh 10 well 20 batches which takes 10 clay let's order that up okay and that will produce us brick now brick is a tier 2 material unlike what we've got in here right now you have a choice you have brick you have lumber and you have glass as tier 2 materials so you will want to replace this tier 1 material with the tier 2 of your choice if you go with lumber you will be needing lots of trees obviously but you will also need nails if you go to your sawmill and look at lumber recipe uh, it doesn't have the advanced upgrade module yet but obviously imagine once we get to au3s we're going to saving around about 40 percent on what i'm about to tell you but ignore that for now uh, lumber takes two um hewn logs and two nails so if we just bring that up to 10 just to make sure there's no no weirdness yeah there is a slight weirdness in the figures so it is 10 batches it's 1.9 really but it, it rounds it up to two uh so we may as well just think of it as two before the savings anyway so nails you will then need to go and make on your anvil from iron so down here you'll find a whole bunch of nails one iron bar gets you 16 nails and uh we can increase that as well uh yeah, there we go. This is this basic. Uh, no, this is still advanced upgrade as well. So if we just sort of play with this a little. So for 96 nails, it takes three iron bars because it's not exactly one. It just starts at one. So don't ever just make one or something. Do check that it's not got savings already by increasing the number here. So you can make quite a lot of nails, but then you've got to basically get a lot of trees and turn it into lumber. Away you go. And you've got a tier two material. Bricks is just getting a lot of clay, really, and mortar. And you can make uh, mortar from sand, which we've got quite a lot of sand. So that's probably going to be my route as far as that's concerned, if I can get enough clay. Clay is abundant in a rainforest biomes. So if we have, let's just see, a uh, biome and our rainforest. So you can see up here, not too far away from where I am, where I was collecting all the pineapples and stuff like that, papayas. Um, is a rainforest, so we may want to think about going there for clay and bring it back somehow. Uh, so that is a fairly straightforward material. 
Glass is obviously a little bit more involved, but involves involves a lot, a lot of sand. Uh, so we will be going to glass anyway. Let's just take a look at the glass book just to see what that needs, because uh, we may as well get the book going as well. So this uh, is probably going to take the same thing. So it's, it's pretty much the same thing entirely. Yeah, it's exactly the same as, as basically uh, pottery. So we can put that on build, start it working, and it will start picking stuff up uh, as and when I actually produce it. Now I'm off to head to get some more clay. Uh, one thing I will suggest is, uh, yes, moving to tier two is good. Right now, I don't have a reason for it, but there is a very, very good reason if you do want to upgrade your food. So if we have a look over here, I'm going to need some food anyway. So let me just uh, get some uh, some food put together. Uh, there we go. If you want to get better food than this, you're going to need to go into cooking. And uh, cooking, or baking, I should say. You can do baking as well. Uh, where are you, Daniel? There you are. So we've not got either one of those yet. You see, they're not discovered. But once you get to those, they will give you two uh, different types of um, table to use, or rather workstation to use. One is called a cast iron stove. And I think that's made on the anvil. Yes, there is cast iron stove. We can already technically make that. It's just some uh, lumber and it's some iron bars. This is for cooking, as you might imagine. There is also a bakery oven. I think that's made in the kiln because it's made from bricks. Yeah, the bakery oven. That's for baking, obviously. And uh, both of those need a tier two room to be in. And they're 45 meters cubed, if I remember rightly. So it can't be a tiny room. It's usually, I think, that's going to be something like four by five internal or something. Uh, floor space and then built up a couple of uh, times so that's what 60 i guess so maybe you can get away with the four by four room but either way um you're going to need to actually convert over part of your area to it or build a separate um build a separate building entirely for it so it's up to you entirely which what which one you do uh, bear in mind that the cast iron stove is very slow when you first start using it so you may want to have multiple of them if you're working on a server if you're on your own it won't matter at, at all don't worry about it. But for now, uh, I need to go make a lot of bricks, think about some cooking, and what we're going to do next. Next up is a good source of fuel. We've been using wood and turning that to charcoal uh, until now. Not really that good for the uh, foreseeable future. We need coal. Uh, so if you want to head down into the wetlands area, you'll see this is where it is on mine. You'll find shale deposits. That's this kind of greyish rock. Much easier to break than granite. And if you're down here, you're going to head with your iron drill um, and drill into the walls. See what you can find. You can see there's a lot of shale here, then some clay, then coal at around about 11 blocks. But we want something closer than that. So I just recommend digging down a little bit. And you can see here um, we've got shale and then coal for the foreseeable future. So if we get that out of the way, we should be able to break through into coal just with one block. Yep, there it is. And let me just dump this outside. We could do with a stockpile, but I haven't brought one with me. I just wanted to see if I could find some of this, uh, mainly for like the, the kilns and stuff like that. So once we've got coal, uh, that's great. However, I'm going to need to take that outside for a second. We need to excavate this a little bit more. And then uh, even just taking 20 coal back to your base to get started is a pretty good, a pretty good start. So I'm off for that and that will keep our fires running. That coal then takes us through level one in pottery into level two, which more importantly gets us the advanced upgrade one. You'll see that is being, well, it's about to be made here. Uh, make one of those. It just takes some bricks and some clay, and uh, we'll use that to basically upgrade this to be more efficient. And then we need to work on glass working for um, basically advanced upgrade two. And after a brief sleep, we can now head across into uh, here and go for glass working. We can take that as well. So that's good. Uh, they're both using the kiln, so you don't need any new machines. But we have pottery here. We can choose this now. Yes, this uh, some recent sort of research online from a couple of people I play with on the, the high pop servers. Um, I want to explain this a little bit more. Uh, it's not too important right now, but when we get to mechanics, it is going to be. I thought this was. Um, doubles the speed of related tables when alone, i.e. Uh, if it's a single table like this, uh, well, single workstation like this, doubles the speed, unless there's another one next to it, in which case it doesn't double the speed. However, uh, there's a bit of a distinction in here with these kind of things. Uh, where, is it? where are you again? When you have multiple different types of machines, let's say you had one kiln and one masonry table, and let's say they were both the same category. You might think, well, I've only got one kiln, so I can go with this and get double speed. But if they're in the same category, 
it doesn't seem to work from what I've read. So you may want to go to this one when you get to mechanics because there are lots of different machines and you don't want an individual room for each machine. You might have like seven or eight machines in the same room. So it's more important to have this one than this one. However, for pottery, well, I'm not too concerned about which one uh, we actually do here. Hmm. Uh, I'm just going to go double the speed. Uh, no, let's just go for this one. I'm just going to go for parallel processing. I'll take the hits from that and uh, deal with it otherwise. So we got the pottery going. We got the class working going. I just wanted to mention that just before we get to mechanics, which is coming up pretty soon. However, the, the AOU2 upgrade, we're going to need to get to glass working for. So we're going to need to make a lot of glass. A couple of ways you can make glass. One is quick lime glass, which we can't get to quick, uh, glass working six. It's five sand and two quick lime. Quick lime's made in blast furnaces. We don't have those yet anyway, so that's no problem there. The other one is uh, just a basic glass recipe, which takes three sand and one crushed limestone. And this is why you need a whole bunch of crushed limestone. Now, if you have a look outside my base, I have a few bits and pieces along those lines. I have well, I've excavated some clay out. But you see, I have some limestone here. I have some clay here. So I'll start digging into the hillside and then I should be able to have at least a little bit to get myself to get myself started down the glass working chain. So uh, once we get to then the advanced upgrade four, sorry, two, <laughs> we'll be able to make it here. The advanced upgrade three is made on the anvil here. OK, the advanced upgrade three. And then you'll see the advanced upgrade four, if we go and look at that one, is made on the machinist table. Machinist table is uh, the where we was talking about mechanics. We don't have that yet. However, AE3s will get us to 40% uh, saving, which is far uh, for the, the best, well, the best bang for your buck, if you want to put it that way. Four will only get you an extra 5%, and five, uh, once you get that, will get you another extra 5% and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, worthwhile doing. So... Off to get more clay outside, the wood carts outside, and these can see it. So I've already upgraded the module to an AU1 in here. And uh, I think I will then just concentrate for now, not on more bricks, but on glass to get the AU2. So sand I've got loads of outside. So I just need a crushed limestone. And of course, that means I need an arastra, but I have them out there as well. So that should be an easy one for me to do. And uh, we already have some crushed right there. So you know where we're going. And... Um, it's going to go up there. All right, see you in a few minutes. Well, for you, instantly. For a minute glass later, we're about to hit glass working four, probably, th oh, there we go. And that then enables uh, advanced upgrade twos. So we're going to take the advanced upgrade ones. I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to seize it from this machine. It's making glass at the moment, but that's fine. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, we'll then basically make an advanced upgrade two on here. That's going to take two minutes or so. We're then going to take that to advance upgrade three over here. Three is going to go back into the kiln. The kiln is then going to be upgraded. And then we'll then go into upgrade the second kiln. Then the other machines all take advanced modules like this, like the bloomeries uh, down in the mine, etc. And I think the did the Arastras take basics or are they advanced? Uh, I just need to check. But it uh, depends how many of these things you have. Are you basic or advanced? You are basic. I did not put any in those because I'm not using them at the moment. But um, yep, that's perfectly fine. So yep, the sawmill, the kilns, the bloomeries all need to be upgraded to AU3s, which we can now do. With all of our advanced upgrades to level 3, we can't get to level 4. Level 4 requires a new skill called mechanics. Now, if you've already done mechanics on a server, you know exactly what this entails. For those of you who haven't yet, um, you're going to enjoy. <laughs> Most skills require uh, just like one or two tables, you know, like a carpentry requires a carpentry bench, a carpentry table, and a sawmill. And then away you go for the most part. Uh, mason, you just got the mortuary table, uh, masonry table, sorry, not mortuary table. Um, and they, they're all very nice and simple. Um, Taylor has a few more these days, but it's still very simple. Mechanics has a lot more. The other thing I would like to do is cooking. That only requires one more table, so that's a simpler skill. But both of those skills, mechanics and cooking, uh, require a few things. One is they require a tier two building. And I went and built one. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, they also require uh, one of the, the, the research papers in here requires copper. And we don't have copper yet either. So two big things that we need. And first of all, a tier two building. Here we are. It's made of brick. It's made of glass. And it's made of lumber. So all three types of tier two material 
are in use. It's 16 by 16 because then I get to fit a uh, nice 12 by 12 by 11 um, large limber stockpile on top. And that's what I've been doing to convert all my dirt into <laughs> dirt ramps because it's the only way to get rid of dirt. On the inside, however, it is uh, f uh, it is 14 by 12, I think, because I've got a section here for stairs going up top. Rather than climbing up ladders on the outside of the building, I've got an actual route up to here, and there is our large lumber stockpile. Uh, in addition to having lots and lots more slots to compare to a normal storage, you can see down here, down, well, uh, there, there's only two rows, one and a half rows. Here, there's a lot more slots. It also double stacks in here. You can see they stacked 10 sand in a normal stockpile, it stacks this five. So just like a wood cart, very handy to have these when you get into later game. I have been playing around with mods on a server and a lot of them are quite nice as well if you're on a high collab server. In particular, there's one for increasing stack sizes, which lets you store more per stack in stockpiles. Very, very handy to have. Um, and I'm not I'm debating whether to put it in the game myself for the solo game. It's not terribly needed, but the main actual thing it helps is when you're mining, instead of holding 20 yourself, you can hold 100 and um yeah stuff like that so i kind of kind of like that mod but we'll see about whether we actually add it anyway so i've got this tier two building it's ready to go with both cooking and with um mechanics in here i've got cast iron stove this requires 1.8 it's two instead of 1.8 because uh, later you get talents which decrease the resource uh in machines but they increase the requirements so i always tend to build the, the tier two buildings at actual tier two so Again, lumber doors, which are also tier two. If you don't want doors or you don't want to have to make doors, leave a one by two tall hole and it'll count as a door. You can get in and out, but you won't have to make doors. It'll still count as a tier two. But if you put these awful <laughs> hewn doors on, uh, they will um, they will detract from the quality of the room. So just bear that in mind. Also, make sure that you build tier two all the way underneath the walls, etc. Stuff like that to make it tier two. Okay, so that's that done. Um, up here, this ramp was just something I made to head towards the rainforest, mainly because I needed a lot of bricks, and bricks need a lot of clay, and uh, I still I'm probably going to have enough near my base, but I wanted to make sure I have a source of bricks if I want to make that taller, that building, or wider, or whatever. So I built it out to the rainforest, wherever you can get a lot of clay just underneath the soil, so that's pretty good, and also it's an easier access for me to run around for papayas and for pineapples. Uh, speaking... Oh, well, there's a bridge here. Ah. Uh, I should have said it, but the bridge before I say speaking of. Uh, speaking of uh, the river, um, 9.4, big update coming soon. Early warning now. Uh, all water wheels, all windmills will stop working if you're if you're cheesing them right now. So, for example, mine on my building are probably cheesing it. Uh, water wheels uh, in particular are going to need running water. So not oceans, not lakes, running water. So this will count uh, anywhere here, really. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so they'll need to be in water. They get a bonus, or they will get a bonus, if you put them in a waterfall. So here will be very good as well. Haven't seen what the bonus is yet. We'll see. have to see how good that is, whether it's worthwhile. But if you're starting on a server and it's 9.4, look for your desert if you're doing iron related stuff, but also look for a nearby river because you're going to need it to actually get uh, mechanical power running. So you may want to think about putting your claim somewhere that lets you claim part of a river and part of a desert if there is a location, uh, for example, like this. Uh, that is a river. It's the start of a river. Uh, you can't just put them in the ocean, though. Won't work. Windmills, uh, you'll have to clear... I think it's perpendicular to the rotation. So, basically, that windmill towards me, you'll have to clear. And maybe away from me, which is my... It may not It may not actually work. We may need to put them on towers on top of the buildings to make them work again. We'll have to see um, once it comes out. So that's coming out with the 9.4, it's out in the next few weeks, um, and the devs have also released some more information about boats, both rowing boats and barges, as far as 10.0, which is not uh, not going to be out just yet, but uh, yeah, lots of development coming on. Anyway, next step is copper. As I said before, we need it for mechanics, so the best way to find copper is to head for your near nearest mountain. In my case, that's directly in this direction, so what I'm probably going to do is extend this road all the way through where I'm standing, all the way to this, this direction, and uh, we should get to the mountainside. So in my case, I have to cross a river. Annoying, but doable. <laughs> Let's just head over here. And then uh, head straight for your nearest source of granite, which is your, your mountain, basically. And if you have a look on the map, well, in fact, I'll show you in, in the world first, but then I'll show you on the map. Um, just straight through here, and you'll see my stockpile. And there it is. 
and then straight into the mountain in my case and then about five or six blocks in you'll start to find copper so use your your rock drill as you normally would maybe dig in a few before you start to put a slot pile down or a cart or something and then just start looking at the walls you know here and then here and see if you can find the copper copper resource vein uh, so the copper we're going to need to basically crunch this down into crushed and then from there we'll then uh, basically concentrate it and process it into copper bars as i said we don't need that many copper bars it's just that um <laughs> once you go from um once you go from ore like this into crushed form it drops down a large amount in terms of number and it drops down again for concentrate i think maybe and then it goes up again for when you actually process it so you tend to have to i think it's something like about you end up with like 12 or per bar so it's not a small amount especially when you you have no road there and you have to run backwards and forwards like this it may be better to just set up a local extra mine setup just like we did with the iron but i don't have any much cleared area around there so i decided not to for the moment and just running back and forwards like a loon well we got enough copper bars to get mechanics with our mechanics skill now learned at level one, it'll work its way through, of course, like anything else. Uh, you're going to want to make a um, machinist table on the sawmill, which I already have, but it's in here somewhere, machinist table. You don't need mechanics to make that. You can make it earlier, but you can't really do anything until you get mechanics, so away you go. So in here, you then get these recipes, and to start off, you see these top ones, you can't even order, they're red. You need to build more tables in a specific order. So the first one is a screw press. You can see here, so the boiler requires the shaper, the shaper requires the lathe, the lathe requires a screw press. So screw press makes plates and uh, something else that I forget, but it certainly makes plates. We'll see what else it makes in a minute. Uh, you're also going to want a couple of iron wheels to make a lathe. Um, and that, they get made from the Wainwright table, even though they're iron rather than wood. So still a wheel as far as that's concerned. That'll get you the lathe and the lathe will get you the shaper because the lathe can make screws. So uh, we should have our um there we go we should have a screw press these are extremely slow okay um iron pistons that's the other thing i was trying to think of um they're extremely extremely slow uh so uh if you're making a lot of them well i'm used to it on a high collab so maybe the faster here but if there are a minute each for each plate so it it it's slow you're gonna want to make multiple of these screw presses with advanced upgrades fitted, that makes uh, the whole process a whole lot faster and less resources. So they've now been fitted. I've moved the anvil in here. It will be needed to make pipes and that's been refitted with its module. And uh, then we've got plenty of space. One thing I didn't cover about this building that you need to know is it has four high internally. One, two, three, four. Um, that's required for mechanics. Not for cooking, certainly, but uh, for mechanics, definitely. This one is only three high. So you see they, they mismatch slightly. Um, basically the assembly machine, which is uh, up here, is the thing that makes steam trucks, and that requires four high ceiling and a lot of space. So it'll probably take this entire corner of the, the room. Um, if you're going to want to upgrade this building in place later, um, you know, when we get to the modern tier, you're going to want to make the interior six or seven high from memory. Uh, seven to be safe, I think it's only six though. Uh, because uh, the machines get even bigger. So bear that in mind if you're going to upgrade in place. I may not upgrade in place. I may end up just flip-flopping between these two two buildings and rebuilding one, rebuilding the other, etc. And uh, you're going to need even more space than this, so I probably may well extend this outwards this way to actually get things going later on. But um, that's not important for me right now. Right now, mechanics and... Um, uh, is there anything else I wanted to put in this building? Just cooking, I think. Yeah, so this is mechanics and cooking building. All right, so you're finished with the plates, which means this thing should be finished any second now with the lathe. The lathe is quite a big machine. It isn't needed too often, so you can just put a, if you don't want to put advanced upgrade in it permanently, like I don't usually, um, you just want to just basically make a bunch of screws and then take the uh, the advanced upgrade back out. So in this case, uh, I may well just put it along this wall uh, like this. And there we go. So you can see uh, it uh, needs mechanical power, but it, we're in range of our windmills already. Let's put in uh, an advanced upgrade, and uh, then we'll uh, basically tell it to make some screws, I think. Give it the storage, like normal. There we go. And I don't know, it, it can just work in the background, so I'm just going to tell it to make 50 screws. It's like five. It's like five iron. It's quite cheap. You are going to need some iron axles as well. Uh, mainly, though, they'll be needed for trucks. So if you're on a server, you'll need a few of them. 
Uh, I don't, so what I'm going to do is make two, and um, I'm going to put them uh, just again in the same storage as everything else. Okay, so we now have a lathe, we have a screw press. That means we need uh, more machines. Uh, what else can we actually make at this particular point? Um, screw press there. Screwing machine is basically used to concentrate iron. It's a replacement for the rocker box, but only for iron. Uh, you can't use copper, so you still need the rocker boxes for copper and gold if you want to do that kind of thing. Uh, the assembly line is used to make trucks, among other things, so we will be needing that. But we do need, you see, you said iron gears for this, which means we need the shaper. Down here at the bottom, it needs nine screws and four plates, so let's get that ordered. Shaper is sort of, um, it's still used in industry, but it, it's... Um, it's more of a precursor to modern milling machines, whereby basically there's a head that moves back and forward towards you, and it moves left and right as it moves across the top of a plate of metal and just scrapes it flat, basically, is, is why, uh, why it's that. But uh, we'll come on to that in a minute. Let's just make a few more plates, get those done. And while that's been produced, yeah, in fact, it probably be produced in about three seconds, the only other machine in here that we need sort of a permanent machine for, aside from the precursors for the steam trucks, is the stamp mill. Now the stamp mill is the replacement for the arastras. It basically crushes things. So you can see we already have most of what we need in here. We're going to need some boards from next door, but otherwise we just need some gears as well. So good point to talk about gears and get that going as well is to get our shaper. And I'm probably going to leave a little bit of space there for another couple of those um, screw presses. And here we have the shaper. I was talking about that this ram moves toward, towards you away and then flattens metal uh, some of these machines they've not really animated very well uh, i'll come on to the whole electric ladle later in the, it just doesn't make it makes no sense um its entire animation is just is just like someone has looked at a lathe but they don't exactly realize how it works <laughs> so uh, this at least is not too bad anyway uh on in here uh we're gonna need some get some iron gears so again let's just basically link up the storage and uh, let's just make about i don't know 12 gears or something We'll, we'll get it later. In fact, uh, I don't want to do that just yet. I want to make sure I put a module in first. Otherwise, that won't show me how many of that. So 12 gears is only 4 iron. So again, I've got 73. So yeah, as you can see, on a solo game, it seems to be really quite efficient as far as your material costs and everything else. It all goes up in high collab, which is why you may want to work as part of a team. You don't necessarily need a team to get to mechanics, but when you get to industry and electronics, it, it will be a very high burden for one person on a high collab server. There's a lot of stuff to do and a lot of labor involved, which means you need a huge amount of food on a high collab server. Uh, anyway, this is going to make a couple more uh, screw presses, or it already has made one more. Yes, it has. There we go. We'll just pop that down. And then uh, we'll just basically carry on. From here, what I think we actually need is the assembly table, just to finish off the episode, really, the assembly line. Uh, that's just going to need three gears. It's going to need a portable theme engine, and that's going to need uh, at least one boiler. So let's work backwards. Um, I'm going to basically order this one, put its labor in. And then a portable steam engine and put its labor in. And then a boiler. And once the tooltips disappeared, I wish there was a way to get rid of these tooltips a lot faster. Uh, there's no option for them. Uh, I, want, I don't even want them at all. I just want them basically to disappear so I can click on jobs at the bottom. So uh, down here, we're going to need some more plates. Uh, so five plates there. Uh, another, uh, another four plates there. That's fine. And then some uh, pistons as well. I'll get all that all ordered, and then we'll try and place this thing down. And one more thing here, though, you may have spotted it already, is when you get to Mechanic 6, you get the Advanced Upgrade 4 from this this table. And that only needs plates, it needs pistons, it needs some lumber, and it needs the AU3. So, yeah, you'll get to upgrade everything once you hit Mechanic 6 by getting to the steam trucks and by getting to the, um, the, the assembly line. You will likely, uh, on a solo game, get quite close. Anyway, we're already into Mechanics 4. Uh, however, um, later on, there's other ways to just basically ha use up all these materials to basically get us to um, Mechanic 6 if we're short. But uh, yeah, that's where it where comes from. And with all of that assembly done, we now have an assembly line, which we can try and fit in somewhere. It is quite large, as you can see. Uh, ideally, I want it up against the windows, if possible, just to keep it out of the way of everything else. So, uh, no. <laughs> there we go. 
quite a large machine as you can see but it basically does a lot of the more advanced stuff so in here we do have the steam truck which i want one of even though i'm not going to use it terribly without the roads but i do want one of them um but also uh, more importantly they invested the mining equipment so we've got blast furnaces which are much more efficient ways to produce iron uh, and other metals uh, bars so you're going to want those in also in here we've got the mechanical water pump and we can use it with pipes from the anvil to basically move water around that does need mechanical power to work there is an electric version but that's later uh oil refineries and pump jacks not going to worry about yet rolling mill is to get us to, st to steel buildings or steel um, corrugated steel we're not going to need that yet either a sink uh, well i already built a sink earlier i'm not sure if i showed you that i'll show you that in a second steam tractor and its attachments are for farming so they are very very quick to harvest all kinds of full fields of stuff wooden elevators for going up and down in mines but um yeah i suppose that that I'll, I'll probably show you one but i probably won't use it and a waste filter basically filters the output from pump jacks or from blast furnaces uh turning what is essentially sewage as far as the, the fluid type back into clean water again but you don't need to do that with blast furnaces there's a trick to using them that i'll show you once we get into those but as you can see there's a lot of stuff to get actually get started with in there and they're worthwhile for us to do. Uh, I did, however, use the pottery skill because I got to pottery seven. I do wish there was an option in here, by the way, that says show only the ones that aren't maxed and uh, that isn't actually available. You can only choose a number or only uh, show the ones that are getting XP. Anyway, in here, I've got uh, a normal small sink and a, uh, a toilet. So they gain some more uh, hazards, score at the bottom of the screen. Um, but to get even more score than that, we're going to want to increase our food tier. So that means getting into cooking, which we'll do next episode. And also um, uh, probably some increase in... Uh, we're probably going to capping the rooms. Are we capped already? We are capped. So we could do with moving to tier two for the rooms anyway, which means you can build the upper floor as brick if you want to. Uh, anyway, uh, I've got started on a portable steam engine again because that's needed for a steam truck. And uh, let's just put that on build down here, just so we can see the remaining things that we need. So as you can see, we need some hides, we need some screws, pipe, plate, etc. Nothing that we haven't already got. Uh, so if we just attach this to the storage, it should pick up some of them at least, at least the axle. So I made two. Uh, yeah, you can see that the actual mats dropped down. So we just need that port another portable steam engine, uh, some more lumber and some more wheels. Back in a second. And here we have our first truck. The steam truck. So, yep, uh, there we go. It is a very, very useful thing to have. Uh, you're going to want to get some coal or some combustible stuff in this case. Uh, if I have any from the kilns, I'll just grab some from the kilns. It's very efficient at using coal, so you don't need a huge amount of that. 14 will be more than enough to get us going. Obviously not from inside a building, but you get the idea. Uh, you can basically just fuel it up, right-click on it, and then... You're now in a steam truck. Now, the steam truck needs a better exit than this, so you can pick it up. You can walk around with it if, as long as you've got enough room left. And uh, it is pretty much very useful for one. It's like a larger wood cart. And I shouldn't have put it on top of my wood cart. Um, so, sorry, wood cart. Uh, there, we, there we go. It's, it's perfectly stable, I promise. Uh, there we go. Uh, so it's a larger wood cart. You can see the storage here. Um, it's uh, got 5,000 kilograms or 5 tons it supports uh, so lots of ore is available that way and uh, you can also put your woodcart in the back if you want to just uh, basically head to your mine and then use the woodcart in the mine so that's very very useful the other thing is that it doesn't consume calories when you're traveling look at the bottom left it's not consuming any calories whatsoever and uh, you are going to need some increased room to turn around. That is, that is one downside, I guess, versus the, uh, the wood cart. But it does let you uh, get around uh, quite happily. So, yeah, I do like getting to the Steam for Steam truck. And later on, you'll get the full trucks. But by that point, you're into a much uh, heavier industry and, and literally a skill called industry. So we'll get back to that one as we get to it. So for now, uh, this is probably a good point to end the episode. We will then uh, work on some more stuff next time, getting cooking in and uh, more calories and more score that way. And then probably moving the mechanical stuff around, the mechanical power and seeing what we can do in the mine. Because we also now have the ability to make the screen machine, the stamp mill and the blast furnace uh, so three very good machines to basically upgrade your mining setup until then i hope you've enjoyed watching if you have do click on the subscribe button down below and click on the notification icon if you want to see when more episodes are out and uh, as always i'll see you next time and thanks a lot for watching